everybody. Welcome back to Chapter 10. We're continuing our discussion of gases in Part 6 of this series. And in this series, we're going to continue using the ideal gas law. And we're going to specifically look at density of gases. So when we say that something's under standard conditions, it means different things depending on what you're talking about. Like it, when we're talking about gases, we have a very specific list of criteria that have to be present for it to be called standard conditions. In, in gases, we call this STP because it's going to be standard temperature and pressure. The pressure is one atmosphere. The temperature is 0 C or 273 Kelvin. The standard amount is a mole and the standard volume is 22.4 liters. The 22.4 liters is called the molar volume. And the molar volume is the volume occupied by one mole of a gas um, at STP. And it doesn't matter what kind of gas it is, they all have the same molar volume. So this is a little bit different from what we saw when we were looking at moles. One mole of helium at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. A mole of xenon does, and as well as a mole of methane. So any gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, will um, have 22.4 liters of volume per mole. And so that means that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of gas, which is a mole, okay, um, is going to also occupy that 22.4. So it's important to recognize that this is, doesn't matter what kind of gas it is, it's always going to be the same. But it must be at STP. It can't be at 23 degrees or, you know, anything else. It has to be 0 degrees C. So the density of a gas is the ratio of its mass to volume. And you may remember we've seen density before and it was always mass per unit volume. In gases though, since we take up a lot bigger space, um, instead of um, grams per milliliter, we use grams per liter. Okay, and so just because we've got larger volumes. The mass of a mole is the molar mass. The volume of one mole at STP is 22.4 liters. And so that gives us a way of kind of backing into the density if we um, know the mass and the volume. All right, and so density in grams per liter is the molar mass, which is grams per mole, divided by the molar volume, which is liters per mole. And if it's at STP, then it's going to be 22.4 liters. So for example, the density of helium and nitrogen at STP are going to be different because you've got a molar mass of 4 grams per mole for helium, but at STP it's still going to occupy 22.4 liters, which gives you a 0.179 gram per liter density. Nitrogen, however, which is a 28 grams per mole, is still going to occupy the 22.4 liters, so its density is going to be 1.25 grams per liter at STP. So one way we go about finding um, the molar mass of an unknown is we heat it until it becomes a gas. We measure the temperature, pressure, and volume, and then we use the ideal gas law to figure out what, how many, how many moles or how many grams or um, the number of moles, basically, the N that's, that's in there, okay? And so if we know the pressure, volume, and temperature, then we can calculate the number of moles. So we know that PV equals NRT. And so then we've looked at the density, okay, and I'm just, this is a derivation, but the, what, the bottom line to what we're doing on this slide is I'm telling you the formula, and it's derived from, again, the ideal gas law, um, where the density is equal to the pressure times the molar mass divided by R divided by T 
which is the temperature in Kelvin. So density is directly proportional to molar mass. So D density equals P times, notice this is a kind of a funny looking M because that's for molar mass of a gas uh, divided by RT. So in applying this um, to the real world, we can calculate the density of nitrogen. Remember nitrogen is one of those diatomic gases. So the formula for nitrogen gas is N2. Um, we have the temperature at 125 degrees C. We have a pressure at 755 millimeters of mercury. All right, and it wants to know the density. So what am I missing from this? Okay, so I'm missing, if I'm having to do density, well, I know R, because R is always that, 0821 liter atmosphere over mole K, right? The molar mass I'm also missing. But I can figure out, um, I, know, I know what the molar mass of nitrogen is, don't I? If I look on the periodic table, it's, it's approximately, what, 28 grams per mole. It's 28.4 or something. 28 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of nitrogen. So by telling me what the gas is, I can figure out what the molar mass is. So that's 28 grams per mole. So once I've done that, I'm going to look and I'm going to check my inventory to make sure that all my units are what they need to be. I'm using R, so they have to be liter, atmosphere, mole, and K. All right. So uh, this one is in millimeters of mercury, so I'm going to have to... I know one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. So that means that my pressure is 0 0.993 atmospheres. My temperature is in Celsius. I have to add 273 to that so that I can say that that is 398 Kelvin. So I've got 398 Kelvin, I've got 0.993 atmospheres, I've got R, and then I have the molar mass, which is 28 grams per mole. So to find the density then, all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug those numbers in because I have already made sure they're in the correct units. So I've got 0 0.993, and that's grams per liter times 28 grams per mole, right? Because that's the molar mass. That's the pressure. Oh, that's pressure. Sorry. I thought that looked weird. It's atmospheres. Because <laughs> um, I was like, I'm going to have grams squared. That can't be right. Okay, so atmospheres and then grams per mole times R. Times T, which was 398K. And so when I get done with this, I'm looking for density and I'm going to want grams over liters, right? And so if you look at that, it should cancel those out really well. And you are going to end up with 0 0.851 grams per liter as the density of that gas. I had to calculate it because it's not at STP, right? So I can't use 22.4, right? Okay. All right, so now you have some practice to figure out the density of the gas. And again, I'm giving, you've got to convert these and make sure that they're in the correct units when you do it. And this last one, it's gonna give you the density and it's gonna ask you to calculate the molar mass. So what you're gonna do is when you, when you work this one out, um, you are going to um, put, your, put your numbers in Okay, 
And then you're going to find grams per mole in that one, and that's going to give you the molar mass, because that's what molar mass is going to be in grams per mole. All right, so it's just another way of looking at the problem. So when, when you do molar mass of a gas, what, what are you going to do? Now, in this particular case, I'm showing you this one because this one is a little, little bit trickier than just plugging stuff in because you got to think. All right, so I've got a sample of gas and I've got a mass of 0 0.311 grams. It did not tell me what the gas was. Okay, it has a volume, so that's mass. It has a volume of 0 0.225 liters. It has a temperature of 55 degrees C, so plus 273 is going to give me, um, let me look, 328, I believe. Yeah. Kelvin. All right. It has a pressure of 886 millimeters of mercury, all right, times one atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury. So that means that my pressure is actually 1.17 atmospheres. All right, and it wants me to find the molar mass. Now, I don't know what the molar mass is, okay? Because uh, I, don't, I don't know what the gas is. I know how much gas I had to start with. So what the way I do this is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that kind of back, and I'm going to use PV equals NRT, okay? So if I do PV equals NRT, I can solve for moles because that's the only thing that's missing because I know R. Right? And so if I look and see what I'm given, I'm given everything in the PV equals NRT except for N. And so N is what I can look for. So N equals PV over RT. I've got everything in the correct units. And so I'm going to solve, and this is the number of moles, right? Okay, so N equals the pressure, 1.17 atmospheres times the volume, 0 0.225 liters, divided by R. times T, which was 328. All right, and I'm going to very carefully in my calculator figure out that that is a very small number, and I'm going to keep, keep several of these digits, right? 0098 moles. So I know how many moles I had. That doesn't tell me the molar mass, but what does tell me the molar mass is I know that the molar mass is grams per mole. It gave me grams at the beginning of this problem. So 0 0.311 grams per, how many moles was it? 0 0.0098 moles. And so when I do that calculation, it's going to give me approximately 31.8 grams per mole. I say 31.8 because some people got 31.9 and, and I got 31.7. So I'm saying 31.8 to kind of split the difference. I think, I think the book says 31.9. Okay, so you should get close to that with your depending on how, how careful you were with your calculations and um, making sure you didn't round till the end. All right. So there you go. So that's the molar mass of this unknown gas. And I was able to do that using the ideal gas law. And I knew that because I had everything except N. And so I could solve for N and then I could solve for grams per mole. Here's you one to do. Remember, if you practice right after, it helps you remember. All right, and that's the density of a gas and molar mass.